Hello my friends, this is the last part, part 14 of the 14 part series on the interpretation of musicians using vibrational astrology. We're going to interpret the birth chart of Jerry Garcia. And we will be interpreting harmonic charts. If you're not familiar with how to interpret harmonic charts, I have a link to a tutorial video on that. And at the bottom, I have a link to the first tutorial video in the series that has links to all of the videos in this series. Here is the birth chart of Jerry Garcia. Uh, who was Jerry Garcia? He was lead guitarist for the group The Grateful Dead. He was part of a counterculture that was outside the mainstream. They are well known for having used illegal drugs um, very heavily. He's widely regarded as a brilliant guitarist. He was also a songwriter, singer, and he worked with many other musicians as well, in addition to being, uh, a, I guess you'd say, the focal point, uh, the best known of the, of the members of the, of the Grateful Dead. Although mostly outside the mainstream media, he is firmly established historically as very important and influential on musical trends. I've summarized some of the ideas in, in Wikipedia here that I think are, are pretty well agreed upon. I, I think everybody would agree with that. So here he is, counterculture person, an icon of this counterculture with the extraordinary music and also the, the, the heavy drug use that was involved with uh, the Grateful Dead. Okay, so there's his chart. Do we see all of this in the birth chart? You know, I don't see it. But, you know, we're going to look at the 11th harmonic chart um, and, and the other harmonic charts, probably the 55th we might expect. His unusual talent, maybe 35. Let's see what shows up. Well, first of all, we're going to look at another pattern, which is the 8th harmonic. We haven't talked a lot about the 8th harmonic chart in this series of videos, but the 8th harmonic chart is just fundamental to who the person is. It's not music, it's not art, it's not science, it's just the basic driving force of what's important to you. And when we look at Jerry Garcia's 8th harmonic chart, we do see the Venus sextile Uranus. And in fact it has a one minute orb. So there's the Venus Uranus that often shows up in music, and Mercury is very tightly quincunx both of them. Now Mercury, Venus, Uranus is a classic pattern for musical talent. Um, and there it is in the 8th harmonic. So here it's showing up as a basic general quality. What does this tell me? It tells me that Jerry Garcia is not really only rock and roll. Because his Venus Uranus tying up with Mercury is in the 8th harmonic, which tells me he's a musician, period. Not necessarily a rock musician, not necessarily folk musician, not necessarily rock and um, uh, classical music or any other. He's a musician interested in all styles of music. Um, he's best known for for heavy rock. I guess you could call it acid rock. I think is what they would call it. Um, but he's more than that. And then he's got Mars in this pattern. It's a Mercury-Mars opposition. So it's four planets. We're expecting big, strong, major patterns. We're seeing four planets very tightly aspected. The Mercury-Mars almost perfectly between this exact Venus Uranus sextile means he wants to understand the music, he wants to master the music, he wants to study it, and it's music, 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 and that's what he does. And he plays with some very talented musicians playing, you know, many different styles. Um, yeah, I guess you'd say mostly folk to, to rock uh, styles, um, but but he, he just loves it, and, and um, that's who he is. He's, he's all about the music. Um, so that's one thing we learned. He's not just rock. Um, maybe where he grew up, may, and, and this doesn't say anything, where, where did all this drug and heavy rock stuff come in? Well, probably in the 11th harmonic, so let's see what's going on, because the 11th harmonic is that unstable thing that pushes you uh, relentlessly, impatiently to something different. There must be something in his 11th harmonic um, that would explain this, and what do we find in the 11th harmonic? He's got a Sun-Uranus conjunction. Okay, the 11th harmonic is unstable. Sun-Uranus in the 11th harmonic? We've got somebody who can't sit still. They often get into trouble, because he did, he did get into trouble as a kid, um, you know, breaking the law and stuff, because they can't sit still. Uh, you've got 11, whenever you get a strong Uranus in the 11th harmonic, it's like a double whammy. You've got the 11, which is moving and impatient, uh, and then Uranus on his Sun, now, in addition to that, we want at least three planets to make a pattern, not just just two. He's got a Moon-Neptune conjunction. Highly sensitive. You know, his, his sensitivity, highly, highly um, 
affected by, by little things. And the moon Neptune is opposite the sun Uranus. So he's got four planets here. For example, you can look at it as a sun Uranus Neptune. Sun is very tightly opposite the sun, and weakly opposition, but still an orb to Uranus. So you have a sun Uranus Neptune. Sun Uranus Neptune in the 11th harmonic um, is very inclined to drug use. Very, very strongly inclined because they want to be awake, they can't wait. I mean, they want this sort of revelation, they want this vision. So we're seeing his 11th harmonic is not emphasizing the music so much, but is emphasizing this electrified feeling that became the the emphasis on the drug and the and the and the, the visionary aspect of this the stepping way outside the normal box and normal um, constraints of society sun uranus moon neptune and it's also making sextiles and trines to venus um, there's a strong sun venus neptune also a venus jupiter it means he doesn't like to work, <laughs> he wants to party, he wants to play music, um, he was heavy, you know, um, you know, he, he uh, I mean, physically heavy, he, he, um, he, he, he wasn't, how can I say, he wasn't uh, dragged down by the mundane affairs of life as much as most people, he, he had to play his mu music, follow his inspirations, and have a good time, not to be too stressed out. Um, so there it is, and, and a good reason why he was in the counterculture. When we look at his chart, we could say he, he needs to be in the counterculture. He's got Sun, Uranus, Neptune, and also within Orb, a Sun, Moon, Neptune, um, four planets tying together, uh, this is really unstable. This is really, uh, you might say, dangerous. Uh, it's so unsa unstable and so out of control. And he lived a life that was on the edge. Very, very much on the edge. And I would say very dangerous. Um, so he was outside the mainstream and, and probably needed to be there. Um, you know, to try to incorporate this into the mainstream could be very destabilizing. Now, you know, that's... I guess a value judgment, and some of you may feel you don't like that statement, that the mainstream should be um, destabilized or whatever. But anyway, you're getting the point. I don't want to make value calls here so much as to emphasize um, just the quality of, uh, of the energy here. And notice, and you probably have noticed a lot of you, that it is a mystic rectangle. Mars is involved here opposite the Venus. It means he's highly romantic. Um, and so you get the drug, sex, and rock and roll here. here here's the sex or romance part of it. Um, and I don't remember from his biography, but probably married a few times, that kind of thing. Um, not necessarily. It doesn't mean that you're going to be unfaithful or can't stay married, but your, your marriage is going to have to be very exciting and passionate, you know, for it to work with a pattern like this. So there is Jerry Garcia. He's a musician. He's a person living on the edge seeking some kind of revelation um, and not, can't, you know, too, you might say, unstable or inspired to be in the mainstream of society. Last thing is he is incredibly creative and a great songwriter and his 55th harmonic, as we might expect, very strong. In the 55th harmonic, he has a Mercury-Venus conjunction, very strong two-degree orb, uh, trine, a Neptune-Pluto conjunction, four planets. So we're seeing here in the 55th, Mercury, which gives the ability to, to write songs. I don't know if he wrote many songs, but he certainly did a lot of arranging. Um, I would expect that he probably would. But the emphasis on arrangement and creativity and genius for, uh, for the improvisation, for the, the melody lines, for exploring new domains... Uh, we have musical genius here, Mercury, Venus, Neptune, Pluto, or creative genius, anyway. Um, remember, 55 is 11, which means m a moving creativity. It's always dance or music, something that could be moving and dynamically creative. Now, also interesting here, by the way, I have some notes, um, is that if you look at these labels, it might be hard to read in this video, but one says 1 15th. And another says a 7 33rds. 
A one-fifteenth is a trine in the fifth. A thirty-third is a trine in the eleventh. What's happening is that there's a very tight trine in the fifth, a very tight trine in the eleventh. How do I know it's tight? Because we'd have to have a small orb to stay in orb at this higher harmonic. So a trine in the eleventh and a trine in the fifth tie together. And if we go back to the fifth to see what lines are, are indicated here, or if we look closely, what we'll find out is in the fifth harmonic, Venus is trying Pluto with only an eight-minute orb. In the eleventh harmonic, um, Venus is trying Neptune with a half a degree orb. This Venus, Neptune, Pluto all tie together with Mercury here. So the creativity and the dynamic motion of eleven, the creativity of five and the, and the movement of eleven are also embedded in here at lower levels, bringing them and tying them all together at the creative 55th level. Um, so these aspects are still within orb in the 55th harmonic chart. His instinctive drive for creative beauty and his yearning, the instinctive drive for creative beauty, that's the Venus trying Pluto in the fifth, and his yearning for a more inspiring or magical beauty, that's the Venus trying Neptune in the 11th, those two qualities combine together with creative thoughts, the Mercury-Venus, in the 55th. So, what you're seeing is an aspect in the 11th harmonic chart, an aspect in the 5th, 5th harmonic chart, combine together, all integrate together with Mercury, and we're getting the creative expression, the dynamic movement of the music, all combining together in this creative genius in the 55th harmonic. Also interesting, if you look at this label, it might be hard for you to read, but in the actual program you can read that it's 4 55ths, and this is 8 55ths. The Mercury-Venus is 4 55ths, the Neptune-Pluto is 8 55ths. What do you notice about 8 55ths and 4 55ths? Well, the Neptune-Pluto angle is twice the distance of the Mercury-Venus. So there's an additional resonance where this is twice as big. Let me show you. Let me show you in the natal chart. Here's an aspect grid in the natal chart. Here's Mercury, Venus. You're all familiar with these aspect grids. The Mercury, Venus angle is 26 degrees 9 minutes. The Neptune, Pluto angle is 52 degrees 23 minutes. Multiply 26 degrees 9 minutes times 2, you get 52 degrees 18 minutes, almost exactly the same. So what I'm saying is that this Neptune, Pluto angle, being twice the distance of the Mercury, Venus angle, Going back to our 55th harmonic, it tells us that that's an 8 55ths and a 4 55ths. And um, just as planets with the same angles, you know, if you have aspects with the same angles resonate, if it's double the angle, there's a resonance, it's an octave relationship, there's an additional resonance. And this, the bottom line is that this Mercury, Venus, Neptune, Pluto is a very special, powerful combination giving unusual creative ability in music because 55 over and over again we see related to creative music either songwriting or musical arrangements and this is, helps create the, the magical musical sound uh, that he generates um, with his guitar playing um, and his arrangements uh, and why he is Jerry Garcia so the bottom line is we found Jerry Garcia all-around musician, eighth harmonic, visionary, living on the edge, uh, really uh, not able to function within the mainstream in the eleventh harmonic, and the creative genius in the fifty-fifth harmonic. It's all there. It's 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 mind-boggling. Um, okay, so um, I already talked about that. So the conclusions. I've already talked about this. I don't think I need to repeat any of this. Um, okay. Um, so I covered all that. So the conclusions. This is the last video in this big series of 14 videos. What are we going to conclude from the whole study of, of all these charts? Conclusion number one, we interpreted all the charts that were selected from the list of musicians. We didn't leave any out. We didn't add any. And this is very difficult to find a model that's going to work with every chart you pick. I think the vibrational astrology did a very good job at identifying using a consistent model, consistent set of ideas, 
the quality of all 14 people. In the process, we learned some things. I, in Donovan's chart, we learned how these soft aspects can go up to high levels. We've learned exactly how these planet patterns work out in different charts. Um, you know, it refines our understanding. The basic theory works very well. Uh, a note, the final note here, from the point of view of a scientific and skeptical view of astrology, what we're doing here is we're building a model. And building the model, we see what the results are from applying the model. This is a qualitative study to see if these harmonic patterns and midpoint patterns can consistently describe the people with a reasonable, uh, within a reasonable level. It's very qualitative and somewhat subjective, but this is how we build models. We also do very strict uh, quantitative research in vibrational astrology, such as build the test of the model for gold prices, where we showed the gold prices vary with certain aspects. So, um, from the skeptical scientific point of view, you could say, oh, this guy just made up a bunch of stuff and he didn't use a consistent set of rules. Yeah, well, you can argue that. But this is how we build models by, by forcing ourselves to make that model work um, with all the charts that we select. That's a very, very important thing. Anybody can pick out 14 charts that are going to work. I didn't pick out 14 charts that would work. I picked out 14 charts and then looked to see if they would work. Uh, and they do. I probably knew a little bit about some of the charts beforehand. I think I knew a little bit about Buddy Holly's chart. Um, I don't remember exactly what order I did it. It's not extremely rigidly uh, um, rigorous scientific study, but it's way, 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 way more rigorous than just picking charts randomly that happen to fit our theories and making excuses when they don't work. We've, we've been very successful in getting vibrational ast astrology model to fit all 14 charts. That's it, my friends. Thank you very much for listening. God bless. Namaste.